hello youtube so we were in the data encoding step for our machine uh, quantum machine learning project and uh, before we move ahead i want to clarify uh, that this section of uh, the basics of quantum computing with sir is also available as a separate video on the channel so if you are a viewer who is viewing this as a separate video uh, then let me tell you that this is actually a part of a quantum machine learning project video where we are working on a quantum machine learning project and yeah with that said uh, uh, let me tell you the plan uh, so this particular tutorial is based uh, is basically divided into two sections in this particular uh, section I will just give you a brief idea about what a quantum circuit is and what it actually is, you know, uh, the basic picture uh, of this thing. And in the next section, I will uh, uh, guide you uh, through programming a quantum circuit using CERC, which is a framework by Google, right? So without wasting any time, uh, let's just dive in. So yeah so this thing that you can see here this is our quantum circuit right this is our quantum circuit and this is what the quantum circuit looks like in fact this is the model for our quantum machine learning project so this is the quantum machine learning model that we will be building uh, so uh, before anything else uh, this thing, uh, these numbers that you see here, these numbers actually uh, represent qubits, and uh, these numbers are actually the coordinates of uh, of uh, the respective qubits, right? So uh, when you define a qubit, uh, you uh, define it using with respect to some uh, device, right? Uh, so if you want to execute your quantum program on a device then there are also hardware restrictions like right because uh, some of the gates uh, like you can just see in the picture uh, 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 work on multiple qubits so the position of those qubits in the hardware actually play an important role so there are various hardware restrictions as well so yeah now uh, with that said let me clear this and uh, now you what you see here all these blocks are actually gates right and they uh, perform uh, they change the state of a qubit so what is this state so initially the qubits uh, are generally in this state right uh, which is uh, zero cat that you can see here okay let me do it again this zero cat this is the direct notation uh, uh, it was it was introduced by direct and uh, this thing actually just uh, represents this vector that uh, I am about to write so This is in fact just this vector but the way of writing is different and actually it's quite he helpful this way of writing and you might understand this if you just look at the calculations that are involved in any quantum computing task because uh, all of these gates are actually uh, can be represented by matrices let me let me just talk about that in a moment uh, let's just uh, talk about this so this is zero cat right and uh, correspondingly uh, there's also a one cat so let me give you one example to understand this so uh, the classical bit uh, as we know can take two states either zero or one so very similar to that a qubit can also take either zero cat or one cat and uh, as the advantage goes it can be in the zero cat and one cat all at the same time which is quantum superposition 
So as I just introduced you to zero cat, but let me also introduce you to one cat that you can see here. And this thing is nothing but this vector. So this is just this vector, right? These, these are just vectors, but the notation used is different. So that's the only case. So these are the two uh, uh, computational basis states uh, for qubit, right? And this uh, gate that I have marked here, this uh, x block with a written x on it is actually represents a quantum NOR gate or poly x gate. And this, uh, what this actually does is that it actually transforms the zero cat of qubit to one cat. So it's like this. And the converse is also true, right? So one cat can also be transformed to zero and zero cat can be transformed to one. So, th uh, so this is one example of how a gate works, right? So this block uh, that you see uh, it actually transforms zero cat to one cat and one cat to zero cat. And this is the function of this particular gate. Similarly, we have different gates. All of these blocks that you see here, all of these uh, double X uh, and double Z, this H gate, this H is nothing but Hadamard gate, and it is responsible for superposition, the quantum superposition that I just talked about uh, a while ago. So all of these gates are uh, they have their own effects on the qubit, and quantum computing is circuit based quantum computing is all about these different effects uh, that you give to a qubit based on the use of these different gates so this this diagram this circuit that you see is the evolution of a qubit uh, through time as you apply all these gates right and again mathematically all the all these gates can be represented by a simple matrices but i am not going into the depth of all of that but i, I will be showing you the matrix uh, for uh, our model uh, the double x gates so you for the notion of the quantum uh, the quantum machine learning model but uh, i will tell you about it once we reach that point uh, for now i think it's sufficient for you to know that uh, this uh, circuit quantum circuit is just the evolution of a qubit as you apply different gates and uh, different gates have their own effect on the qubit on the state of the qubit and all of these gates can be actually represented by a matrix all, all each of these gates have their own matrix representation uh, and I think that's a good introduction uh, to uh, what what is actually a quantum circuit and uh, if I, I think I will make a separate video or playlist on on each of these gates maybe in fact I had a quantum computing project on uh, this particular channel that helps you to uh, understand what these gates are and how they evolve uh, and the uh, state of a qubit uh, using the block sphere representation. So I think you should check it out. It will really help you to uh, understand uh, uh, the single qubit gates and their calculation, their matrices and their effect. Uh, and it is implemented using IBM QSKIT, the project of uh, the quantum computing project which was a quantum visualizer. So with that said, I think it's a good point to stop. And in the next part, I will be uh, uh, using SIR to help you uh, to understand how do you actually uh, develop this uh, type of quantum circuit using SIR, right? Thanks a lot.
hello youtube uh, so in the previous part i just gave you the introduction to uh, quantum circuit so what it is basically and uh, now in this part uh, let us just start working on uh, programming a quantum circuit ourselves by using a circ which is the framework provided by google right so yeah so we will be working in Google Colab, so so that uh, all the user, irrespective of their system, can work on this thing. And before we start working, we need to install this. So the simple command is pip install circ or circ as we call it. And I have already completed the installations, so I just wanted to save your time. So you. Uh, don't have to wait while all this uh, uh, installation is in progress so yeah we are all set and now uh, we can start working uh, with our circuit so that's so of course the very first thing is that we need to import circ and let's see if that happens yeah you can see uh, it's uh, the cell is executed successfully so we have successfully installed sir and we have imported it so uh, the very first thing uh, uh, that uh, you think of is defining a qubit right because a quantum circuit is nothing but a collection of qubits uh, and how you evolve uh, those all of those qubits using different gates right uh, so, how do you define a uh, qubit? So, let me uh, put this qubit is equal to uh, so dot. Now, let me uh, tell you before moving ahead that there are different ways of uh, defining a qubit. So, for example, we have named qubit, uh, as you can see, named qubit, and it and you can give a name to it. So when it uh, when the uh, circuit is printed all the different circuits uh, uh, the, the sorry uh, the different qubits uh, have their particular name with them and uh, there are also other ways uh, of uh, defining a qubit uh, that are more with respect to you know uh, the hardware side so for example if i just do line qubit right serve so dot line qubit and uh, these are the qubits that are actually arranged in uh, that are actually arranged one by one and on a one dimensional structure right so line is a one dimensional uh, line is one dimensional right so uh, if i say uh, define a line qubit and i can define multiple qubits in the line using range so here uh, we have these three uh, qubits that are, are defined one after uh, that are there actually exist one after another in the particular line so uh, so they have their positions uh, in that sequence right one after another on a line but uh, there is also another way to define a qubit and that is uh, using grid qubit yeah and uh, I know that uh, most of the Google's chips actually uh, have uh, followed this type of uh, definition, right? Because these are chips, they are 2D structure, and uh, for defining uh, qubits that lie on the this uh, 2D plane, uh, we use this grid qubit uh, method. And uh, yeah, so again, note that when you are applying various gates on various qubits uh, it's important that you choose your qubits carefully because uh, uh, different gates uh, if, uh, have uh, uh, act on a different number of qubits so if a gate is acting on say two qubits and uh, those two qubits are uh, not near to each other then uh, that has its own disadvantages right so therefore, uh, this uh, hardware uh, restrictions also come into the picture, and you need to uh, 
think about all of it before you start developing your quantum circuit. So for this simple tutorial, uh, I will just use the named qubit. Yeah, and what should I name it? Uh, let's just name it tutorial. Uh, not a very cool name for some for a qubit, but I think that's that's okay. So yeah, just define this. So we have our qubit all set, and uh, we have now we need to convert this qubit into the circuit object, right? Because uh, we will we will just working with the single qubit, but uh, to uh, it's important to declare it as a circuit so we have our circuit and to define it as we have yeah circuit the circuit object and uh, into this we can directly apply our gates right so say for example I want to apply the poly x gate that we saw in the previous part right then uh, you can do here uh, is just uh, give your qubit so we just have one qubit we give that qubit and the circuit is ready uh, it's just that simple so we are successfully executed and if i just see this yeah See, we have, I have printed the circuit, and you can see the name is here tutorial. And this uh, X just represents our operation of poly X gate, and yeah, it's that simple. And uh, there are also other things like simulating the circuit and uh, stuff like that. But uh, uh, for now, I just want to uh, wrap this tutorial uh, at this point because a uh, detailed uh, uh, tutorial I can just make that in before and for some other video where I can uh, tell you about uh, all these things in much more detail here uh, the, the focus is more of on the quantum machine learning project so that's it and for the viewers who are viewing this as a separate video I hope I just I was able to give you some brief introduction to what is uh, this uh, circuit based quantum computing and how do you actually create a simple circuit using circ so i think that's it and thanks a lot for being here with me and i wish you all the best for your journey ahead in quantum computing thanks a lot